Now these are the uh, parts that go to uh, put together the carboy and bottle washer that I've made up. The heart of the system is this pump, which is a submersible, submersible utility pump. This one is from Sears. It's probably 20 years or 23 years old, but it still works just fine. It is a one-sixth horsepower pump that does about 23 or 24 gallons per minute. The output of the pump is a regular garden thread uh, male fitting. Uh, on top of that, I mount this uh, garden hose manifold that has four outlets on the top and then a port on the side to which I've added a, another cutoff valve and an elbow. So let's put this together and you can see how it goes. Alright, the manifold is uh, attached to the top of the pump. Next thing that goes on is the, uh, the riser, which is a half inch uh, exterior diameter uh, copper pipe to which I have uh, mounted it on a um, on an adapter. That's a garden hose threaded adapter to a half inch uh, male pipe thread down there. This adapter adapts the half inch pipe thread to a half inch compression fitting. And that's a half inch uh, compression nut with a half inch exterior um, copper pipe that's about, uh, I don't know, it's about 18 or 20 inches long. This piece threads into this uh, into this middle valve here. You probably could use any one, but this one happens to center the, the riser pretty much in the middle of the of the hole as it comes out of the top of the, um, the cleaner bucket. Alright, next is to, uh, is to simply set the pump and the uh, manifold assembly into your bucket. I've using, I'm using a bottling bucket with a spigot on the outside which makes it easier to change water. As I'm done with cleaning solution, I can drain it at the bottom and fresh, uh, refill it with fresh water. To, uh, to pump either pump fresh water up into the carboy or the, or the keg or to uh, back flush the system and get the uh, cleaning solution out of that. Next thing I'll do is attach the hoses that are going to go here and here to um, put liquid cleaning liquid up into the um, two quick disconnects of a, of a keg if you're doing a keg. Alright, first these are the uh, the fittings that are going to go onto the manifold to attach the, li the lines that go to the keg. These are uh, garden hose uh, fittings. Uh, on, the other, on the other end of them is a 3 8 inch barb. I have two of them. They will screw directly onto those valves. The hoses that I'm using here are uh, 5 16 internal diameter uh, vinyl tubing that you can get at Lowe's or, off of, or <laughs> off Home Depot or uh, at, a, at most homebrew sh supply shops. It's narrower than 3 8 inch hose um, for a couple of reasons. It makes a better, tighter fitting on these uh, on these fittings, especially the fittings at the other end where the um, uh, where the flare fittings are that connect to, to the actual cake connectors. And also uh, the narrower hose uh, is just a little more flexible going in and out of this bucket. So let me show you what this looks like when it's all assembled. All right, so the hoses are connected to the manifold, and I've also cut cut through the lid here with a Dremel tool, uh, a hole through which I've threaded each of these two um, each of these two hoses. So this lid, I'm going to snap it on just for stability purposes. It's pretty easy to snap on when you've uh, when you've got slots cut out of it for this uh, through the side there for the um, uh, the pump's power cord. So I'm going to snap this thing closed. And this way, these hose, you can also reconfigure this thing to sort of center it better while it's uh, when, before it's in operation. These hoses will come through here. I'll be able to connect the keg to the hose, either connect it first and then turn the uh, keg upside down, or uh, put the keg on f first and then sort of get these um, on while the keg is upside down. Depending on the length of hose that you use and your exact configuration in there, it's easier sometimes to do one or the other depending on... Um, how you need these hoses to wind up inside here. So let me show you how that works generally. All right, let's see if this comes out. Uh, I'm going to connect the, uh, the the gas connector to the uh, inside, and the liquid connector goes to the output. Now, um, what you need to do is is make sure that these, when when it's upturned on the cleaner, the ports are going to need to be turned inside like this. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to rest flatly on top. So we'll play with it as it goes up, put it down, and once it's up here, you can sort of turn these towards the inside, like so. You need to uh, make sure that the hoses are not going to rest on under, or get, not going to get underneath the, um, the collar here of this keg. So 
You can do one of two things. You can either just tuck it all inside, or as you can see, this goes really smoothly. <laughs> um, you can wrap these things sort of around the outside like that. I probably could have used an extra inch or so because that's going to pinch. So what I'm going to do at this time is just tuck these hoses all the way down inside there. Get them out of the way. Uh, they're long enough that they won't kink. And uh, and there we go. And uh, all right. <clears throat> now before I start actually cleaning this thing by pl plugging this pump in, I'm going to have to make sure that the valves are as I need them. This center valve, which is the one to the riser, I'm going to need to turn that off for the moment because uh, what I want to do first is to pump cleaner through the. Uh, through the gas and liquid lines inside the keg. And if this valve is open, this is going to be the path of least resistance, so uh, all the water is going to come out through here. So we're going to close this one. There's enough room in here to squeeze in and do that. Close that one. We're also going to close this one on the end there, which is, uh, I use that one for pumping fresh water through there. It's a purge or back flush pump. So we'll shut that one too. That'll leave the two, um, the two open valves being the ones that are going to go to the keg. And by the way, that uh, valve on the outside there, I added that to the elbow in order to um, in order to be able to turn off all these other valves. Leave that one open to simply recirculate water from the pump back into the reservoir when I add um, when I add cleaning solution. That'll just help dissolve it all before I'm before I start pumping up the mechanism. You know what, through trial and error, I've determined that it's easier to manage these hoses without getting them kinked by not having them come through these side things, but just coming out straight up through the middle like this. And then um, coiling them a little bit in underneath so that you get nice uh, loops without having to, to kink up the hoses anywhere. And that way, there's, they're much easier to connect to the keg once the keg is upside down. Uh, on the uh, on the filler and ready to go. So we'll tuck these down inside, which will help minimize any uh, any possibilities of kinking. And now <clears throat> take the keg. Uh, this is going to be a two-handed operation, so let me shut this off for a second. All right, with the keg upturned now on the uh, on the cleaner, <clears throat> I'll tilt this thing. It's pretty easy to do. There's enough. Uh, Plenty of leeway there to uh, to get this done with uh, two hands easily. Let me set this camera here just in the hopes that it doesn't fall down. And uh, snap on the liquid connector. Slide it over here in place. Come over to this side and uh, do the same thing with Mr. Gas here. There. Set it on there, and the K, the uh, the lines inside look like they're nice and uh, smooth and not kinking anywhere. So that's uh, excellent. Now, uh, before we do this, I'm actually gonna have to fill some water in there. So hang on just a sec. All right. There's the uh, the pump in action. The uh, liquid is coming up through the pump and the, or through the, um, the liquid and the gas connectors and then uh, rinsing down the sides of the keg. You can see there's some overflow here which is being handled by these uh, by the holes that I've drilled so you shouldn't have any spillage but you can also move this thing around to, to get it centered properly in case you need to and if you really need to you can sort of shut it down for a minute and, and get the uh, get the riser more centered but since we're not pumping up through that riser right now it really doesn't matter. And uh, coming through this side, you can see the water is going mostly down through the middle of the, the hole that was cut out. And um, next thing I'll do is switch the um, switch the valves to turn off the the water going through the connectors, and I'm going to have the water go up through the main riser. All right. <clears throat> I've uh, reached in there and turned the switch to uh, open up the valve to open up the the flow to the main riser. Plug this thing back in. Oh, there goes something. And now with the water coming up through the riser, you can see that there's a much higher flow because the diameter of the riser is much greater than the, than the lines that it has to force through to get up into the, uh, into the dips tube. So with this, um, 
really heavy duty flushing going on. The water is being shot directly up into the top of the keg and then it's cascading down the sides and with cleaning solution in there. Uh, the thought is to leave this on for, you know, five, ten minutes at the most maybe. Shut it down and with about a <clears throat> between a half a gallon and a gallon of water in there, you can clean as many dirty kegs in a row as you have. And the same thing with carboys. And <clears throat> with this flow coming up through the middle of the riser, there, there seems to be um, a lot less splashing around the outsides as well. I don't know why that is, but um, anyway, there's uh, there's a shot of the water flying down into the into the reservoir. The next thing I'll do is uh, take this keg off and then put on the um, the really simple apparatus to do a carboy. All right. <clears throat> what we have is the uh, the next assembly, which is a carboy dryer, actually, set on top of the bucket over the over the hole. Carboy sits on top. This will handle the, either these plastic butter bottle carboys or uh, or any size glass carboys like that six gallon one down there. Uh, they hold it very steadily up there, and from here and, and these this uh, this actually these ridges in the tr in the thing here will keep this from riding all over the place. It'll you can find a nice little nesting spot, and it won't uh, it won't go side to side very far. And I'll plug this thing in one more time to uh, give you some of the cleaning action here that goes on inside. Now, as you can see, depending on how up, how uh, in the middle that you know, the, um, the stream goes, you may uh, occasionally want to turn this thing just to give uh, more cleaning exposure to the rest of the surfaces in here. But you can see there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, movement going on in there, which is going to help scrub with a good cleaning product like PBW. That's going to scrub any um, any any brewing residue, any dried on yeast or proteins or anything that's in there, and it'll take maybe three, four, five minutes at the most to get even the dirtiest carboy clean. And, uh, and all of that with uh, less than a gallon, you know, between a half a gallon and a gallon of cleaning solution. And here's the, uh, the same mechanism with the, uh, with the glass carboy sitting on top. Again, that's pretty rock solid. It's not going anywhere. Plug this thing in and... Uh, there you have it. And with these uh, these carboys that have a flatter bottom, you can see that there's even if it's a little bit off center going up in the middle there, there's pretty more it's much more uniform uh, sheeting going on down the sides, uniformly around the carboy. But um, even with the plastic one, if it doesn't come up straight in the middle, you can either adjust your dip, your riser tube to to get it to come up the middle, or just. Uh, Give this a turn every uh, every minute or so to get more complete coverage and uh, more thorough cleaning. And that's uh, basically the end of this video. Hope you have a good time making one of your own. And uh, see you.